team ethos, man, which um, I would imagine would be here at a place like this that works in sport. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, everybody going for the same cause. You know, I back you up, you back me up, and yeah. you know, some days I'm a little short, but you're going to help me out. Some days you might be short. Yeah. You know. And you know, we talked about my athletic background. There are a lot of people in this company with I'm very, good. very good athletics. There's, a, there's a guy who played in. Um, the Little League World Series and played baseball in college. I mean, there are a lot of people who have really cool sports stories, right. um, and you know, who now they're not they're not athletes per se, but you know, they still are at heart. You're not you're right. always in once an athlete, you're always an athlete, right. right? And you bring it to work, and it's kind of cool because you really get to work with people who you connect with and mm -hmm. you know, and, and have that same type of work ethic. Yeah. 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 Do you think if you um, didn't play sports at the level you played, it would be a little tougher for you? That's a good question, and I don't even know if I have a good answer, mostly because I can't see myself not playing sports. Right. Like, it really, from age five, it, like, defined who I was. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I felt comfortable, whether it was on a baseball field or a basketball court or a volleyball court, whatever it was, that's where I felt comfortable, and I really became who I am right. because of sports. Right. So it's tough to think, like, who I would be or what I would be doing if, if I didn't have a sports background and, mm -hmm. like, it sounds kind of cheesy, and people are always talking about how sports influence, you know, you know their work ethic and whatnot. And, and maybe that's true to a certain extent. Like, you know, you understand what it means to put in a lot of work, right. and then see results, and, and know that you know your hard work will help you out in the long run. Mm -hmm. But it's not even so much that as like athletics really help me be me. Right. You know, like maybe my work ethic might not have changed. I might still be a hard worker. I just might not be any good yeah. at sports, but right. like it helped me become more, more confident. Just, just you know, knowing that I'm, you know, this is who I am. Right, right. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Yeah, really. yeah. You know. Yeah, so. gives you some attitude too. It does. It uh, does. <laughs> I think probably a lot of the guys back at, um, that are watching this probably feel the same way. So a lot of the co my colleagues have sports backgrounds too. So that's that's pretty good. Um, Hey, one last thing, man. I want to ask you about uh, CLC's competitors, mm -hmm. and um, you know, what what do you think CLC's strengths are, and and, and what is your competitive advantage in the marketplace? Um, okay, so in essence, we have two competitors. One is an actual company. Um, they're the licensing resource group. Um, they do what we do, um, but they are a smaller operation. And then the other is when schools want to work independently. So that's not really a direct competitor like a company, but there are schools like a Virginia Tech in the ACC conference, in the ACC that um, works on their own. They just decide, you know, we have X number of people in this department and we just want to handle everything by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think the advantage of working with CLC for a school comes down to um, being able to be a part of a group and like when to under, the licensing industry is pretty complicated and having to get each, when, when a company has to get approval from each school, that's tough enough. Mm -hmm. And when they go to sell things, they, it's, they, they want to have a whole package deal. Right. So a lot of times they'll come to CLC and they'll say, here's my idea, mm -hmm. we want to have 25 schools a part of this. Right. And we can turn around and we have you know, a top 25 list. We can, we can get things done for them a lot more efficiently. Right. You already have that relationship with them. You can say, hey, this is an idea we have Absolutely. via somebody. Absolutely. So, so like the, the phrase that uh, a lot of people here use is um, a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, we've got, we've got programs going on. We've got marketing ideas going. We've got all this stuff. And so just being a part of the group. Even if you're not directly involved in one particular program, mm -hmm. because because you're a part of this group, things are things are growing for you. You are helping to maximize your program. So that's one of the biggest advantages is being a part of that overall group and right. making things easier because they're pretty complicated already. So making things easier for licensees and retailers mm -hmm. who are trying to get into the college business. I think the second thing is that we have best in class services. We have an in-house legal team. We save people tons of money by doing stuff in-house. They don't have to do outside counsel. Um, we have the, all the online stuff that we do. We are the first or only company to do that. Um, the royalty reporting, when when we bring, we collect all the checks. I, I tell you, I can't even imagine, like, Virginia Tech, how many checks they get from licensees constantly. And they're having to file those, and I don't even, I don't, 
they storm the shoebox. I don't mean I don't know right, what they do right. with them, but but we're able to take care of that. And so a school can have one licensing director, and that's it. And they don't have to. And then they basically have 80 people at CLC working for them. Mm-hmm. So we're able to give them services that they just can't. A school can't afford to do on their own. Right, right. So there really is an advantage to um, to being to being with us, but. I also think, you know, if there was one complaint from a, from a school, it would be, well, the, it's great to be a part of this big group, but sometimes I feel like I get lost in this big group. Right. And I think that's where our department, University Services, comes to play. Yeah. You can't let your school, no matter how big or small, feel like they're lost. you got to give them that warm, fuzzy You have to make them feel like they're, they're, that they are your only client. Right. It doesn't matter how big or small, not, like... I was dealing with somebody in a different department one day, and they said to me about a smaller school, they said, man, you would, I mean, I've got all this stuff going on with all these other schools. I'm trying to help out all these other um, university services people, and they got to realize that, that they're not the only school. And I said, you don't understand. That's not, they don't need to realize that. They right. need to believe that we think they are the only school. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, at the end of the day, that's how we have to make all our clients feel. So if that if there is a weakness, that would be the one. But I think that we do a very good job at combating that and telling people and making people feel like like they're they're the only ones. Okay. So you know, um, really giving great service to your clients is, is one of the advantages you have. Absolutely. Um, as far as being one of the most innovative in the field, um, as far as your technological mm-hmm. um, advancements, and also I was reading about the um, hologram. Yep. The hologram, um, I guess, what do you call it? Licensing tags? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it can be a tag or a sticker. Right, and in CLC, I guess we've all probably seen them in shoe stores and whatnot. Um, you guys have are created that. Yeah, we, we work with, um, we, we actually work with a number of um, partners, and uh, we work with Jay Patton, and they do work for a, a lot of different organizations. They help manage our uh, image inventory, so um, when, when a company becomes licensed, they actually can download the logos that they need mm-hmm. through J. Patton. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a service called Logos on Demand. And so, so that way they can get it in the format that they need it because right. a lot of times they need high resolution stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, also we've worked with J. Patton to do holograms. And what that helps us do when we go out, one of the other services that we provide our clients is game day enforcement and hot market enforcement. So we'll go out into the into before a football game, after a football game, you know, leading up to a bowl game during the NCAA tournament, and we're working with uh, undercover local policemen to make sure no one's selling bootleg stuff. Right. Well, that hologram lets us know whether something is legit or not. Mm-hmm. So a legit piece will have that hologram either on a tag or if it's a hat, it'll have a sticker, or if it's a really small non apparel thing, it'll usually have a smaller sticker on it. Mm-hmm. It'll have that, and it also has a serial number. So we can actually trace the serial number. We have a program that we can link to on our handheld device that we can trace it, and it'll tell us who ordered those. Right. And, you know, bootleggers are smart, and they sometimes they sometimes have um, bootleg hologram stickers. But we can, if we trace it and it says this is not a, a legit tag, we know that right off the bat that we're dealing with something and we have to take care of it. So that really helps us deal with um, issues and, and be confident when we're t- when we're um, dealing with bootleggers or anything like that. And it is one of um, the things that that a school that is not a part of CLC um, would probably really miss if they were to, to leave us because it helps a ton. Have that enforcement with background. Absolutely. Nice. And and it's and it goes to even like not just um, bootleg stuff, but stuff where say a licensee misuses a mark mm-hmm. and it was disapproved, or they put something out in the marketplace and they shouldn't have, right. and they put their tag on it, we can trace it to them in seconds. So do they get a, like a, a monetary penalty or anything? Yeah, anything there, like there are damages can be assessed. It, it varies on what the um, what, what they've done, but there are damages. They'll, they pay, they'll pay back royalties if they you know, didn't do so. We have auditing services, so we go into licensees. Um, we, we usually do about around 150 audits every year. Right. So we randomly check on licensees to make sure they're reporting royalties correctly. We try and help them with their systems, like if they're having a problem reporting things correctly or they don't understand you know, what they should be paying royalties on, we'll provide it. So we've got, I mean, we do everything under the sun. For